This is Channel A, the City University of New York. You've probably never ridden on a trolley car. Possibly you've never even seen one. But in Brooklyn recently, they resurrected a trolley, and we were there. Look, the people, the problems, and the pleasures of life in the Big Apple. The series is produced by students of the Broadcast Journalism Program and the Television and Radio Department of Brooklyn College. We call it Metropolitan Magazine. Thirty or forty years ago, it was quite common to travel by trolley in New York. It wasn't very fast. It wasn't particularly comfortable. But in hindsight, at least it was fun. Some cities, like San Francisco, kept trolleys in operation. In New York, the trolley gave way to subways and buses. But recently, a ceremony in Brooklyn evoked a touch of the past and brought at least one trolley to life. Our reporter, Sue Leibowitz, and a crew were on hand. I'm Sue Leibowitz, and together we're going to take a fascinating look at a turn-of-the-century trolley car that was once owned by a king. And then I'll take you on an intriguing adventure through an abandoned tunnel that was rumored to be a dumping ground for victims of mob violence. Let's go. We're here at 88 Water Street in Brooklyn to celebrate the unveiling of an 1897 vintage trolley car which once belonged to King Oscar II of Sweden and Norway. It's similar in appearance to the trolleys which ran at the turn of the century in Brooklyn and Manhattan. Mr. Fiddleman! <laughs> Inspector Riley from uh, the Brooklyn Fourth here to guard the uh, citizens uh, who are seeing the trolley today on its maiden voyage. And you? I'm uh, I'm Tim Curley, sure, and I'm the conductor on this trolley tour today. Okay? okay. And you guys, can you identify yourself? Oh uh, no, I can't identify myself, ma'am. I'm sorry, lady. Uh, have to keep the likes of them <laughs> off the trolley oh, okay. too. Okay. So tell me, guys, um, from what year are you? 1899. 1899. Sure it is. Okay. Do you expect to see any trouble? Uh, we yeah, have some, they have the likes of these, but we're not going to have any trouble. Uh, They're all the officers. Why don't you go on, boys? Come on. Uh, move on. Move on. <laughs> I'm here now with uh, Robert Diamond, who is president of the Brooklyn Historic Railway Association, and this is Larry Keyes. Larry, what is your involvement with this? Um, I met uh, one of the uh, uh, supporters of uh, um, Robert Diamond in this uh, Brooklyn Historic Railway project in um, the course of my official business and became intrigued not only with the project but with the great energy that he's devoted to it. And I'm really happy to be here today to uh, inaugurate trolley service. <laughs> oh, great. Um, Robert, has Larry helped you out a lot in this endeavor? Oh, tremendously. You know, his help has been invaluable. He played an instrumental role in this project, getting it off the ground and getting it to where it is today. Were there many others who were heavily involved in helping you get this project off the ground? Uh, many, many people. Uh, the borough president's office has been extremely helpful. Uh, John Herzog, 
who has been the financial angel behind this, so to speak. The New York City Community Trust gave us a nice grant last spring, and uh, Councilman Abe Gurgis has been extremely helpful as well. And without all these people's support, this would have been completely impossible. He sounds like a good politician. Yes, he sure does. Listen, uh, the, the one, one thing that I want to indicate is that uh, the project is not all the way there, and um, Robert has devoted, really, his adult life to this project and um, needs more money, needs more support from the city, which he's going to be getting. Uh, we're in the process of uh, going through a land use review process to open up the tunnel for the museum purposes, but he needs help. So I, uh, uh, this is but the first stage in what will be many more stages and successful ribbon cuttings, if you will, for this terrific project. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Would you like to see trolleys come back again? Yes. yes. Definitely. Oh, Definitely. Yes. My son lives up in Kingston. They have a trolley museum there, and they have trolleys. They have about 12 trolleys there now, and they, you know, they run on weekends. I wish they would bring them back, like on 42nd Street in Manhattan. Very practical, really. They carry a lot of people with no air pollution, and it's actually cheap to run. <laughs> exciting day for you. Oh yeah, this is definitely a red letter day in my life. You know, all of the work I've been putting into this for the past five years and indeed a lot of work that a lot of other people have put into it for, for many years have see you know, partially come to fruition today. You know, our ultimate plan is to get this trolley running inside of the Atlantic Avenue tunnel and uh, we're well on our way. Where did the trolley come from and what is its history? I was on the radio on WMYC last February talking about the project and they mentioned, uh, and I mentioned to the host that I needed a trolley car to run in the tunnel ultimately and along the entire Brooklyn waterfront up to this point. And uh, the host said, well, where are you going to get a trolley from? They're hard to come by. I said, I don't know. So I, I have a funny feeling though, something will happen. Two days later I got a call from a gentleman on Staten Island named George Hasselt who was a historian and collector of railroad artifacts. And uh, he said, oh, I have a trolley for you. And I said, yeah, sure, I have a bridge to sell you. You want to trade? He goes, no, seriously. So he took me up to the Bronx to see it where he had it stored in his friend's backyard. And it was, you know, beautiful, beautiful condition. And the next, next thing was to move it here to Brooklyn. The problem was finding a place to keep it because nobody wanted something this big. So I got in touch with David Wolantis from Two Trees Management, who's developing this entire area. And uh, he said, sure, bring it here. I'll give you a space free of charge in one of my buildings. And there's even a track attached to it that you can run it on. So here we are. <laughs> what effect has this had on your life, finding the tunnel, well, um, getting this trolley? It completely, it completely changed my life because I was an engineer by profession. And at the point in my career that I was supposed to go out and start working for my first company, the trolley and the tunnel showed up. So I had to make a choice between that and a conventional job working for a defense contractor. So I took this because it was more interesting. Tell me a little bit about the Brooklyn Historic Railway Association. Uh, I founded this organization three years ago after we went down and saw the tunnel was in excellent condition. It's a nonprofit educational corporation chartered by the New York State Board of Regents and we have uh, federal, state and city tax exempt status. You know, all contributions are tax deductible. Robert, is there an, an address or a phone number that people can send donations and contributions to or if they want to join that they can contact you at? Yes, absolutely. The address is Brooklyn Historic Railway Association. 599 East 7th Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11218. And the telephone number is 718-941-3160. Well, we promised you a tunnel, and here we are. This is going to be fascinating. Wow, this 
This is incredible. I can't believe you say that again. <laughs> it's building up the hill. Yeah, we, we, we dug this out, basically. It was filled up to the ceiling. It was filled up to within 18 inches of the ceiling. Uh -huh. And Thank to you. get in here originally, you had to crawl on your hands and knees 75 feet up to this bulkhead. And the stairs weren't here either. You had to climb down a chain ladder 20 feet to the floor of the tunnel. So we built the stairs also. And all this dirt that's laying around here is the stuff we excavated from inside to make the passageway. Yeah. I'm amazed at how smooth. Well, the amazing thing is that, is that it was built in only seven months using human labor. No, not automated at all. No machinery whatsoever. All by hand. All by hand with 800 Irishmen using picks and shovels and donkeys and uh, pack mules to cart away the dirt. It's the first uh, piece of en subway engineering in the world. It was the first railroad tunnel to be built by the cut and cover method under a city street. The tunnel was constructed by 800 Irishmen using just picks and shovels in only seven months. And uh, the railroad wanted the tunnel built in only four months, though, in order to coincide with the opening of railroad service from New York to Boston. Mm -hmm. And uh, the railroad sent down a particularly nasty foreman who tried to persuade the men to work on Sundays. So one of them shot the foreman, and his friends, uh, the, the workers' friends, chopped up the body into little pieces and scattered the parts throughout the tunnel. Oh. And here he is someplace, in little pieces, but no one knows where. Um, this, you said, was also going to be a museum. Um, how would you make this a museum? Well, that's actually fairly simple. It was a two-track tunnel originally. By putting in one track and leaving the space formerly occupied by the second track, we can have a linear museum uh, with exhibits spaced in a linear fashion down the length of the tunnel. So besides people walking through and looking at exhibits, people could actually see exhibits as they ride through in the trolley. And the exhibits would show Brooklyn's, you know, Brooklyn's history and the early history of railroads. So you would have glass cases and... Right, um, and audiovisual things that people could look at as they ride by. As it exists now, it's 1,800 feet. Uh, several hundred feet were lost at either end when it was sealed off in 1861. The original length was a half a mile. What is this? This is an interesting point. It's, there, it's one of several ventilator shafts that used to allow smoke and steam from the locomotives to escape and light come in. Now, if you look up inside here, you can get an idea of how deep we are. We're about four feet below the surface of Atlantic Avenue. Four, Forty feet. Four, Forty feet, rather. Four stories. Uh, now, an interesting thing, you know the way people throw things into subway gratings today? Well, that's yeah. nothing new because there was a metal grate on top of the shaft in 1861, and kids and people threw bottles and marbles inside. And people haven't changed in over 100 years. They were throwing things in the subway gratings back then. Are these some of the things? Right. Have? Here's part of a pre-Civil War beer bottle and different pieces of bone and pottery and things that people some just tossed in. Shells. Right, Gowanus oyster shells from before the Gowanus Canal was polluted. You used to be able to get foot-long uh, oysters inside of there. How much do you see this whole project costing to renovate the tunnel? Well, the tunnel, it's, uh, to set up the tunnel itself uh, will cost about a million dollars to put in the new entrances, uh, put the track in. This is including a lot of volunteer labor that would be used for laying track and other small things. For building the entrances, obviously, we'd have to use contractors for the larger things. But the entire project from the tunnel down to the waterfront could be done for about five or six million dollars tops. Like many groups that immigrate to New York, 